I really get annoyed when I'm deceived. I really get annoyed when people deceive me. I'm sure you do as well. And I want to show you this morning that many evolutionists deceive us. And they expect us to believe the nonsense they, they propagate. And I want to show you some of the implications of that deception. We are about to expose Monty White and the whole Answers in Genesis staff. If you watch this video in its entirety, you will not be able to deny that Ken Ham, Jason Lyle, Tommy Mitchell, and Monty White all engage in the very practices they condemn. There are three categories of believers in how our universe is created. Evolutionists believe that over billions of years, we have evolved from a simple organism by changes in the inherited characteristics of biological populations over successive generations. Old Earth creationists believe that God created the universe billions of years ago, including prehistoric dinosaurs, and Satan's rebellion caused catastrophic damage to the Earth and destroyed the dinosaurs. 6,000 years ago, God reshaped the Earth and created mankind. Young Earth creationists believe that the entire universe and man was created by God 6,000 years ago, including dinosaurs. They believe that Noah's flood caused the fossil record that we have in the earth today, and dinosaurs have since become extinct. I believe in an old earth. My career as a police detective has conditioned me to look at everything from an evidentiary standpoint. There is evidence you just can't ignore, like the fact that there are only dinosaurs in the fossil record. If dinosaurs lived with modern-day man when Noah's flood occurred, then there should be billions of men, women, children, sheep, goats, giraffes, lions, bears, and other modern-day creatures in the fossil record alongside dinosaurs. There are none. That evidence itself demands the conclusion that mankind was not on this earth when the dinosaurs were all suddenly destroyed and fossilized. I have studied all three categories of believers and have found that only one group does not deliberately deceive their followers. I agree with Monty White that evolutionists deliberately alter scientific studies, misrepresent the facts, and totally ignore God's word. The young earth leaders do the exact same thing. Monty White states that he is annoyed that evolutionists deceive their followers. Well, I'm annoyed that Monty White deceives his followers. These men are allegedly intelligent, so I find it hard to swallow when I see statements that are blatantly false and no one questions the validity of the claim. For instance, Monty White makes a statement here that is completely ludicrous. Frogs have not changed, and neither has the coelacanth. The coelacanth, uh, the fossilized one at the top there, and the one on the bottom, which is uh, uh, the one that was found in 1938 and uh, off the, uh, living in the Indian Ocean off the coast of South Africa, and uh, we've now found groups of them living off the coast of Indonesia. There's been no change. Every scientist in the world knows this claim to be false. In fact, there is scientific evidence to prove otherwise. A scientist, Dr. Scott Woodward, an associate professor of microbiology at Brigham Young University, was successful in extracting DNA from prehistoric remains and published his findings in the Journal of Science magazine, stating, the DNA is like nothing we've ever seen before and bears no resemblance to the DNA of any modern day animal or fish. So that fish that resembles a coelacanth is nothing of the sort. In fact, when it was discovered by scientists that the fish was not a descendant of a prehistoric marine dinosaur, they officially changed the scientific name of the fish. Other scientists, like paleontologist Don Horner in Montana, has had success in extracting DNA from dinosaur fossils, and his findings are the same. When the DNA was compared with modern DNA, it did not fit any of the known animal groups, and it was at least 30% different from the sequences of modern mammals, reptiles, and birds. Neither the evolutionists nor the young earth creationists are crazy about these findings. The evolutionists would love to show that the coelacanth is a direct descendant of the prehistoric fish found in the fossil record. Not so. Young earth creationists would love to prove that prehistoric dinosaurs are still alive today. Not so. But both groups, 
evolutionists and young earth creationists continue trying to explain away the DNA evidence. Dr. Woodward explains how DNA evidence is altered by these groups to modify their findings. DNA is an amazing molecule. It has the power to identify an individual unique from any other individual that's ever lived on the earth. But in the same breath, <clears throat> it also has the power to connect people from all over the world. Every person in the world shares about 99.8% of their DNA. But just in that 0.2%, there's enough variation to identify you uniquely as an individual. And so depending on where and what parts of the DNA you look at, it can be used to either cluster large groups of people together or to identify you as an individual. And so we need to understand how that works and the differences between that and, and how accurate each one of those different steps can be. If I want to ask the question, what am I, based on my DNA, I can get different answers depending on which DNA I look at. Do I look at the mitochondria? Do I look at the Y chromosome? Or I do, do I look at everything? And that's important when we talk about uh, some of the studies that have been done in tracing DNA of, of ancient peoples. It's important when we're dealing with DNA that we're very specific about the types of DNA that we're, we're talking about because you can get different answers based on the type of DNA that you're talking about. What the DNA study shows is that prehistoric dinosaurs are in no way related to modern day creatures. It proves that there is a gap between the existence of prehistoric dinosaurs and modern day animals. There is no connecting DNA. There is a missing link which will never be found. Dr. Woodward has shown that the entire human race share the same DNA. Every kind of modern day animal shares the same DNA. Dinosaurs do not. Yet Monty White continues to spread misinformation to his followers. And uh, we've now found groups of them living off the coast of Indonesia. There's been no change. Let's take the example of what Monty White teaches about Job chapter 40 in the Holy Bible. He claims that this chapter is describing a dinosaur that lived in Job's day. The description of the beast called Behemoth starts in verse 15 and ends with verse 24. Watch the following presentations given by Answers in Genesis staff. There's no dinosaurs in the Bible as such in terms of the word, but it describes a dinosaur in Job uh, chapter 40. You get this chapter and give it to young children and get them to draw the type of thing that is being described here with the, the huge uh, um, legs and the huge, huge body and the tail like a cedar tree. They will come up something, look, uh, with a drawing something like a dinosaur. And you know, this is another thing for years and years and years, depictions of dinosaurs, they were like, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the sheep with their tails dragging behind them in the, in the fairy story and in the nursery rhymes. But now you go to museums and you see them, they, they, their tails are put so that they're uh, sticking out behind them. And this is because there is now, they realize a balance between the, the neck of, and the head of the dinosaur and the tail. And as they walked along, they would do this. Mr. Ham, is, is there anything in the Bible, though, you talked about dragons and so on, is there anything in the Bible that mentions dinosaurs after the flood? Well, I think there is. Have you ever read the book of Job? In the book of Job, in Job chapter 40, verse 15, there's a creature called behemoth. The Hebrew word means large quadruped. And it means a, a big animal on four legs. As you read the description of, the, of that particular creature, its bones are big, its body is big, I mean, everything about that creature is big, and it has an enormous tail as well. Is there any evidence of any creature like a dinosaur in Scripture? Actually, there is. In the book of Job, chapter 40, beginning in verse 15, Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is in his loins. His force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Now that's obviously a hamster. <laughs> well, there's, are there some specific references to dinosaurs in the Bible, specific kinds? Well, I think there are. 
If we take a look in Job chapter 40, starting with verse 15, we read about a creature called behemoth. It's the Hebrew word behemoth, beast, beast of beasts. And it just, it, it, if you read the description of it, it sounds an awful lot like a sauropod dinosaur, one of the dinosaurs that had the very long neck and long tail and broad body, four legs. Now, if you've got an NIV Bible, for instance, if you look in the notes at the bottom, you know what it says? This was an elephant or a hippopotamus. Have a look at that description. Now, I spent all day at the zoo once getting a picture of the rear end of an elephant. There we are. Uh, in fact, let me just focus upon that. There it is right there. Looks like a cedar tree to me. Does it look like a cedar tree to you? Behold, behemoth. I don't think so. You know, that's a really good description of a, of a diplodocus. The name diplodocus means double beam, referring to the long muscles along its belly to support its very long neck and very long tail. An enormous tail. Verse 17, he moves his tail like a cedar. That's a tree. He's got a tail like a, like a cedar tree. Really amazing. Because in the NIV study Bible, the creature we just read about is described as possibly the hippopotamus or the elephant. Now, I've got a little bit of a problem with that. Anybody been to the zoo lately? You ever seen an elephant walking away from you? Does that look like a cedar to you? In Tennessee, we say that's a pretty sorry cedar. Now, a lot of people have said, well, you know what? Behemoth really can't be a dinosaur. And, they, and I find that they say that not because the description doesn't fit, but because of their preconception that people and dinosaurs didn't live together, and therefore Job couldn't possibly have seen a dinosaur. And therefore they'll say things like, well, behemoth probably is just an elephant. But if you read the description, does it really fit the description of an elephant? Not really. Does an elephant have a tail like a cedar tree? Not at all. An elephant has a tail like a little rope, not a tail like a cedar tree. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. I can't prove to you that behemoth is a dinosaur, but I can prove to you it's not an elephant because the description doesn't fit. For those of you who see nothing wrong with these statements, you have proven why the Young Earth Movement has a following and how Monty White is able to deceive his followers. There are a total of nine verses that describe behemoth, but all of these teachers confine their readings to verse 15 through 19. None of these lecturers dare read the last five verses to their audience, verses 20 through 24. Why? Because the last five verses clearly are describing an elephant. Here is Job 40 in its original Hebrew text. Verses 15 through 19 are covered. Verses 21 through 24 are ignored. They ignore verse 21 that states, He lieth under the shady trees. The original Hebrew word for shady tree is tesel, which is an ancient lotus tree. Lotus trees grow to be about 30 feet tall. There is no way the largest dinosaur, which stood at 90 feet tall, could fit under the lotus tree. Elephants can fit under the tree and do it all the time. Verse 22 goes on to say, the shady trees cover him with their shadows. They omit verse 23, which reads, Behold, he drinketh up a river, and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. The term draw up is giach, which means to draw forth or to come forth. This is describing water being picked up with a tool. This is an elephant drawing forth the water into its mouth with the use of its trunk. And verse 24 proves unequivocally that the creature is an elephant. It reads, his nose pierceth through snares. The word pierceth is nochab, which means to perforate or pierce. The word snares is mokash, which means a trap or a cage. Just go to the zoo and you'll see Behemoth with his nose piercing through snares. A brontosaurus is so large it could have never been captured and caged, but elephants were often used as work animals in Job's day. This verse is describing an elephant. So is there any doubt why these leaders leave out these verses? And the verses they do read, they modify to fit the young earth theory. For years, these leaders have insisted that Behemoth has a huge tail that looks like a cedar tree. Go to museums and you see them, they, they, their tails are put so that they're uh, sticking out behind them. And this is I mean, everything about that creature is big and it has an enormous tail as well. You know, that's a really good description of a, of a diplodocus. The name diplodocus means double beam, referring to the long muscles along its belly to support its very long neck and very long tail. In just this one statement, they have altered God's word in two places. Here's the original Hebrew text for verse 17, which contains the sentence about behemoth's tail. There is not one reference to its size or how it looks. Not one. 
This is what the text says. He moveth his tail like a cedar. There is only one word describing the tail, and it is an action verb, kofetz, which means to move or to bend. Here is what the elephant's tail looks like when it walks, exactly like a Lebanese cedar tree swaying in the wind. How can the answers in Genesis staff continue to get away with misrepresenting God's word day after day?